Hello students, this is Professor Lorenzo and welcome to your online class. Today we're going to continue our lessons on essays and we're going to talk about some essay no-nos. Uh, we're going to talk about proper MLA citation, in-text citation that is. We're also going to talk about transitions and about preventing uh, run-on sentences. So, let's get moving. First of all, we've talked about this a little bit more. I'm going to just point it to you again, just in case you're starting with um, or you're about to start writing your essays. Remember, the process is first choose a subject, then do some minor research by maybe hitting the internet and determining whatever questions you want to ask or points you want to make. Then focus your essay with a thesis statement. Do a lot more research at that point. Create yourself an outline and then write an essay. I'm not going to get too much into focus in your topic because we talked about this a lot in class. But remember, you gotta take broad topics and, and whittle them down to something that a minimum five paragraph essay up to whatever the uh, lesson requires. Whether it be a 10 paragraph essay, 11 paragraph essay, and so on and so on. Uh, remember, you'll start with a broad topic, topic, then you'll list the concepts and themes related to that topic. You'll generate yourself a research question using a ideas for the concept map which is on the next page um, by either finding some general words looking up some people who write on those uh, subjects uh, also maybe some additional keywords a good thing to do would be to probably uh, take your broad topic see if your topics transportation type transportation into the uh, in, in, into your computer and then maybe look at the first five or six articles and see what their subjects are. See if there's one specific subject about transportation that, that interests you. If you already have a, you know, a, a, a pared down, uh, topic, uh, such this one, this, 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 the, the broad topic on this particular, um, uh, essay subject we're looking at is climate change, but the writer has taken it down to why is climate change such a controversial topic after looking up the general keywords, looking at some people who probably write about climate change, and then they've come to the conclusion is this this is what they want to write their essay on. So you need to do the same thing. Remember, there's five things not to do in, this, in an essay. Uh, you, you have to address the questions topic in your introduction. You cannot stray away from the focus of the question, especially in your conclusion. You have to insert quotes uh, that are introduced properly. Um, and you have to provide references. You also cannot use informal language like colloquialisms, which is basically slang, or overused rhetorical questions. As a matter of fact, you should not have any questions in your essays whatsoever. Essays are about answering questions, not asking questions. We'll start with uh, introducing a quote. So, in this particular example, the writer writes, according to some, Dreams express, and here comes the quotation, profound aspects of personality. Then the uh, writer has inserted uh, the citation. The author's name is Folks. The quotation came from page 184, and in the end it went through, I mean, or rather, sorry, though others disagree. In the next example, it's according to Folks' study, dreams may express profound aspects of personality. So here, um, the writer had placed the citation in the proper area, um, but we just have the page number, and the reason we just have the page number is because the, is because the writer already introduced the author. The first one, um, the author is not introduced, so the author's name is included um, in the citation. The second one, because the author uh, is introduced, then it is not included in the citation. Remember, Typically, without a citation, all punctuation must remain inside the uh, quotation mark. So, if there was no citation here, then this comma would be inside the quotation mark. But because we're using a citation, then, the, then you have the quotation mark, then the citation, and then whatever punctuation there is, whether it be a comma, exclamation point, a question mark, period, whatever, and so on and so on. In this last example, the writer wrote, Is it possible that dreams may express, here comes the quotation, profound aspects of personality, and there again, 
because the author was not introduced, the author's name is included in the citation, and then as you see, the question mark goes towards the end. Uh, of course, you don't have to handwrite your quote your, your uh, citations because I showed you how to input them in the Word uh, in, in Microsoft Word. So you just continue to do that, but you still need to know what the process is so that when you proofread, you make sure it's correct. Here are various other ways to introduce quotations. Um, here's an example: the setting emphasizes deception. We have a we have a, a colon and then we have the citation right there. So as you say, you can use a full sentence followed by a colon to introduce a quotation. Piercy ends the poem on an ironic, no, ironic note, uh, colon, and then there is, there's a quotation. You don't have to do that way. You can do it with a comma also, but you can use a, a, a colon or a period. Here are other examples to work with. You can also begin a sentence with your own words, then complete it with quoted words. Notice Hamlet's task to, is to avenge A, and then the writer uh, adds the quotation. They have Shakespeare, because that's the writer, the page number they received it from, and then there's your punctuation. Then we have to quote a critic or researcher. You can use an introductory phrase naming the sources followed by a comma. According to Smith, and there's the quotation. Other examples are in Smith's words, in Smith's view, and it goes on and on and on. Smith states, Smith, rem Smith remarks, Smith writes, Smith notes. You can use all types of uh, words to introduce it. Just make sure you do it in a proper structure. If your lead into the quotation ends in that or as, don't follow it with a comma. So if it's that or as, there should be no comma there. That's the only time. There's a video in the static non-narrated lesson uh, that you should take a look at, and that'll give you some more in, insight into using proper MLA uh, style in text citations. This tells you a little bit more about in text citation. Um, it, again, as we said earlier, it includes the last name of the author, followed by a page number, including enclosed in parentheses. This gives you some information, information on quoting directly. I'm not going to go through, the, through every single page uh, line by line, but you want to go back and take a look at this before you write your essays, this, this current research I say you're working on. Remember about long quotations. Uh, any, any quotation with more than four uh, lines needs to be done, done differently. It needs to be done in the block quote. We went over that in class. However, uh, there is a video in here that you can take a look at in uh, the static non-narrated lesson that will show you how to do it again. Colloquialisms, again, are just using slang. Don't use slang words in, in, in essays. Unless you're maybe writing a short story or something like that. Or you're quoting someone. You can use it then, of course. But not in your own words. Never use a question in an essay. Never. Except in reflective or argumentative essays, never use first or second person. Persuasive essays you can use I or you, but never do that in a, in, in, um, in a research essay. Unless you're quoting someone. Here's another video here just about what is first person, what is second person, in case you've forgotten. You can uh, view this video in the static, non-narrated lesson. We're not going to go into these. We talked about a lot about this in class. However, you want to make sure you understand these rules and proper, proper structure. Let's talk a little about transition words. Uh, again, that's something we talked a little bit in class. Um, you need to... Uh, view the next video here on transitions if you don't remember what we talked about. But you need to use more transition words instead of choppy sentences. So please take a look at the video. Avoiding run-on sentences, comma splices, and fragments. We've talked about this a little bit in class. Um, understanding sentence structure helps in identifying and correcting run-on sentences and sentence, frag sentence fragments. 
A computer spell checker does not typically catch these common mistakes, so do not rely on a spell checker to correct grammar for you. Be sure to carefully proofread all assignments for these issues. So here, a complete sentence has minimally two parts, a subject and a verb. A sentence must also express a complete thought. Such a phrase consisting of a subject and a verb without complete meaning is also called an independent clause. He writes music. This sentence has a subject and a verb. The sentence also expresses a complete thought, so its meaning is clear. Few sentences. Uh, there are two types of run-off sentences. There are few sentences and comma splices. So the definition of a few sentence consists of two independent clauses. Both the comma and coordinated conjunction are missing. Here's an example of a few sentence right here. So how do you fix that? You can either create a compound sentence by adding one of the uh, fanboys. You can uh, separate independent clauses with periods and capitaliza capitalization. You can insert a semicolon or you can link ideals using a subordinate clause. These are all examples. And you can also find these in the static non-narrated lesson. Comma splice. A comma splice consists of two or more independent clauses that follow one another and are incorrectly linked together only with a comma or commas. The coordinating conjunction is missing, basically. So how do you fix that? You can uh, insert a coordinating conjunction, one of the fanboys, insert a semicolon, or um, you can use some of these other examples. Take a look at these, please, uh, inside. Um, the static non-narrated lesson to give you a little bit more insight. Um, if you're not having any problems with, with run-off sentences, uh, you don't have to worry about it. But if I'm if I've uh, edited one of your papers and told you that you were using run-off sentences, you need to take a look at this so that you improve it. We talked a lot about determiners. Um, there is another. There's a video coming up about determiners. In other words, using the, the, the indirect articles like a, n, and the. Make sure you're using those properly. Here's the video. Again, you can view this in the static, non-narrated lesson. Remember to pay attention to how you're using is, am, and are. The sentence in grammar is, she is my best friend, not she be my best friend. We can use be in our own language when we're talking to each other, but we cannot use that in our in, in our essays. So make sure you're proofreading your papers uh, to eliminate that mistake. And Again, there is a video in the static non-narrated lesson which talks about using am, is, and are correctly. So if you're having some issues with that in your essays, if I've made mention, to, mention of it in my remarks on your essay, then make sure you go back and watch the static non-narrated lesson to figure out how to correct it. So that concludes this video. Um, as usual, there will be a quiz uh, that you need to complete in order to indicate that you've watched this video and that you are in, in fact present in today's online class. Other than that, have a great day. See you next time in class. Later.